Okay, so in this video, we've got a uniform rectangular lamina, ABCD, of mass 20 kilos, is pivoted at one corner A, a light inextensible string attached to the opposite corner applies a tension force T to the lamina as shown. Given that the string holds the lamina in equilibrium at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, find the tension in the string. Okay, so what we want to think about is putting into our diagram the centre of mass. So centre of mass working vertically downwards at 20 G. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with problems with laminas at angles, okay, it is easier to look at and deal with um, Especially with rectangular laminas, um, looking at the base, well, like kind of like a parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane approach that we used when we were dealing with uh, inclined planes. Okay, so that's what I want you to think about. Now, the problem here is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to take moments about a. And I know the total moment's going to be zero. OK? The problem is trying to find the distance between A and that force. OK? Now, obviously, it, it can be done, but it is easier to deal with everything if, as I say, you look at this parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this force, the weight force, up into two component parts. We're going to divide it up into two separate forces. One that is uh, perpendicular to the plane, perpendicular to the plane, and parallel to the plane. Okay? So rather than using the 20G as it stands, this angle here will be the same as that angle, so that's the 30 degrees, okay? So this side of this right angle triangle, okay, will be 20G cosine 30. Now, this side is the same as that side there, okay, which will be 20G sine 30. Okay, so rather than thinking of the weight as a single force, I'm going to think of it like two separate forces, a horizontal and vertical component, if you will. So when I'm taking moments about A, what I'm thinking about is if I look at this force here and I project it down, well, if that's six metres, then that's three metres. It's going around in that direction. It's going clockwise, so it's negative. So we've got minus 20g cosine 30 times by that distance of 3 metres. That's the first force to consider. I've then got the 20g sine 30, which is going that way. So that's going to go round anti-clockwise, so that's positive. So plus 20g sine 30 times by its distance. So if I project it along, if that's 3 metres, then that's 1.5 metres. And then I've got the tension. Now the tension is going in that direction, so that's going in an anti-clockwise motion. And now the tension is 6 metres away. So this stops me from having to worry about thinking about angles with the tension if I don't, you know, it becomes very awkward if I don't think of this um, as parallel and perpendicular to the plane, okay? So I've got uh, plus t times 6 metres, and that's got to be equal to zero. So this gives me an equation that's got t, okay? t is the only unknown. So let's see, what have we got? Well, we if I add the 20g cosine 30 times 3 to both sides, so 20 times 9.8 times cosine 30 times by 3 is 
Okay, I've got to take away 20 lots of g uh, times sine 30 times 1.5. So that gets me 362.222. And then I need to divide that by 6. And so t is 60.3704, etc. So 60 newtons to two significant figures. Okay, so that problem is made a lot easier um, by separating the weight into two component parts. Okay, once you've done that, once you've kind of separated it into those two parts, um, the problem is quite straightforward.